I've had several questions regarding swap memory on M1 Max due to news articles like this telling people to be scared. But is this something that you should be worried about? Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Carmoon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. So swap memory in basic terms allows the operating system to provide more memory to a running application or process than is available in physical RAM by using a small portion of its SSD. And that's the quick explanation basically. SSDs are typically made of NAND cells which store bits of data. Reading the data from these NAND cells have no real effect on its life on an SSD. But every time you write to these NAND cells, the cells written on get damaged slightly. macOS ensures that the load written is evenly distributed over the cells of the SSD. But there is a time when these cells that have been written by so many times can no longer reliably store the data that you've written on. This basically means that the SSDs have a limited amount of write cycles it can sustain sustain before it fails and each SSD is different so professional enterprise SSDs will normally have or be able to handle more writes than a consumer grade SSD can. Now typically we get this information from the manufacturer but Apple doesn't disclose this information. The manufacturers put a TBW or total bytes written number on their SSDs. The higher the number the more you can write to it before it fails. Now some SSDs do last far longer after this point but after after the TBW point, you are now basically down to luck in terms of when it fails. So because we don't know the TBW of Apple's SSD, we basically need to make some educated guesses because they don't tell us. If we take a look at the Lexar Professional SSD for 256 gigabytes, you get a TBW of 150, but there are some other SSDs like the Western Digital Black that get 200 and the Sabrin Rocket Drive gets 380. And the higher the storage, the higher the TBW. On the screen, here are the three SSDs with its different TBW values. And and if we take an average of all three to assume a very rough number of Apple's SSD, then we get these numbers. The 256 gigabyte model, as you can see, gets around 243 TBW. So if we take a look at Apple software updates to assume how long Apple assumes its customers at maximum keep their MacBooks for, or potentially want you to upgrade your MacBooks, Big Sur supports Macs up to seven years old. So if we assume the same software support for the M1 Mac, then if we do some quick math, here is a table of how many gigabytes you can write to the SSDs in these M1 Max every day for seven years until it dies. Now that's great and all, but what does this actually all mean in the real world with the amount of swap memory on average an M1 Mac user might experience? So let's look at the original post that kind of started this whole thing off. User Longhorn reported that his M1 Mac had written 15.7 terabytes in just two months. That means that in seven years, he will write approximately 659.4 terabytes if the user continues at their current rate. Now, if we apply his usage to the average that we came up with for the 256 gigabyte storage, that means his SSD will potentially fail after just two and a half years. Scary, right? especially because he says that he has the 16 gigabytes of unified memory, meaning that there's no escaping this, right? And if we apply his usage to the lowest TBW SSD that we were researching of 150, then his SSD may fail just after 19 months of usage. That's crazy. However, looking at the post a little bit closer, it says that after he has written 15.7 terabytes over two months, his 256 gigabyte SSD has dropped by 1%. That means the 256 gigabyte Apple SSD has a TBW of 1,570, meaning his drive will fail at that point. But if we take into account rounding that the monitoring software may have, i.e. 0.5 or 1.49 could read 1%, the 256 gigabyte SSD has a theoretical TBW of between 3,100 140 and 1053. Now we don't know how accurate these smart monitoring tools are, so we do have to assume these numbers are correct for now, but 
After nearly an hour and a half of looking at people's posts of their numbers online and their percentages, it do, does look like Apple's TVW numbers are much higher than the numbers that I had predicted earlier on in this video, meaning that Apple's SSD across the board are looking around about 1,400 TVW for the 256 gigabyte. And for the 500 gigabyte SSD, it's around 2,000. And for the one terabyte and two terabyte options, they increase to around 2,500 to 3,000 TBW numbers. Before we get into the rest of the video, I want to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this part of the video. Now more than ever, we are so reliant on our internet and without a VPN, you can be exposed to online threats like identity theft, ISP tracking, and even price discrimination when you're shopping online. With Surfshark VPN, it protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet, keeping anyone unwanted from seeing it. Unlike a lot of VPNs that I've tried before, Surfshark is fast and reliable and can be installed on an unlimited amount of devices. They don't track, monitor or store anything that you do online, meaning that there's no connection or activity logs. Use the link down in the description below or use promo code TECHMIKE to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Thanks again Surfshark for supporting the channel. If we now apply long haul's usages to these new TBW figures that we've worked out, this means he will get 16 years of use out of his SSD. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think many Mac users will be keeping their Macs for that long. SSDs don't normally degrade in a linear manner, so it could degrade faster over time. But based on this person's usage, he will most likely replace the Mac before the SSD dies. Looking through the posts of other Mac users, some have reported using 10% or more within just a couple of months, but this was a very, very small percentage of users. Plus, they don't report on their uses or main applications, so it's hard to determine how they got to this number so fast. So what are my thoughts on all this now that I have spent nearly a week gathering all this information? And will swap memory affect your SSD? Yes, swap memory will affect your SSD, maybe more so than previous Macs. But saying that, as more information is being shared right now and the story is developing, this doesn't actually look to be limited just to the M1 chip Macs, as some Intel Macs are being affected by this too. So this could be a big uh, issue, which means that we could be a software update away from this just being a blip in Apple's history. The vast majority of people who have posted their numbers actually have nothing to worry about. Even though some were complaining about their numbers that they were posting, it really showed to me that there's a lot of confusion out there. The numbers are higher than normal, but even so, there isn't a huge worry. As I've mentioned before in a previous video, these SSDs are far more reliable than they ever have been. And it looks like Apple's SSD are some of the most reliable SSDs out there. But you might be asking, I'm still worried about it, Mike. Is there anything that I can do about it? Well, Apple is gonna love me here, but if you buy more SSD storage, then you can reduce this as you get a higher TBW with those higher drives. And looking at the reports, it doesn't look like 16 versus eight gigabytes of unified memory actually makes much difference to any of the users. There is something that I did want to mention, and that is if you are someone who uses a lot of Rosetta applications, so applications that haven't been optimized for Apple Silicon, this could increase the issue. So I would say if you can, avoid it. I think the bigger issue is the fact that these SSDs in these Macs aren't user replaceable, which means that if you are someone who does end up finding out that they are in that 10% of degradation after a few months and want to keep their Mac for 10 years plus, then you won't be able to replace the SSD on your own. But then again, this is a tiny percentage of users and the SSD could last for several years after the TV TBW. The SSD doesn't just suddenly stop working the moment the TBW is reached, and most manufacturers actually underreport this number, meaning these SSDs can last much, much longer. It's just there's no guarantee after that point. So overall, yes, the media has overhyped this issue. Yes, it will decrease the lifespan of the SSD, but before you flood the comments, no, it's not going to be a problem for most of you. And it's something that I personally won't be worried about. There is a chance 
chance that there is a compatibility issue with these monitoring tools. And it could also be due to other apps not functioning properly in the background because the M1 chip is so new. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on your thoughts. And also please check out the links in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Tech Carmoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you guys know what to do. There's two fantastic videos. Go ahead, click them. I spent ages on them. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.